our dear viewers and listeners. Welcome to today's Bible study. This is the day the Lord has made. And like the Bible says, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And as we open today's Bible session, let's dedicate it to God in prayer. Father, we thank you, King of Glory. We praise your name, King of Glory, for you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We celebrate you, Heavenly Father, yes, for the great and mighty things you do in our midst. Yes, Indeed, with you there is no shadow of turning. Mm. Father, we rejoice at your word. Yes, we receive it with meekness and gladness. Mm. Have your way, precious Holy Spirit. Indeed, you are a great and awesome God, yes, moving us to your timings, King of Glory, yes, to fulfill your purpose in the earth, Heavenly Father. Yes, we thank you, King of Glory, yes, for a day such as this, yes, and a time such as this, King of Glory, yes, that your word goes out mm. to rebuke, to yes, correct, yes, to edify, yes, and to amplify your voice above every other, yes, to align us to you, King of Glory. Mm. Therefore, we thank you mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our dear viewers, as we continue to, with today's session, we're coming to a point where God's final judgments are about to be released on the earth. And in preparation for this final judgment, today's session opens us to the prelude to how this will all unveil in the end time. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Revelation. Chapter 15. In the shortest chapter in the book of Revelation. Eight chapters. And we will read. The Bible says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels, having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who have the victory over the beast over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name standing on the sea of glass having harps of God they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the Saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord? Lord, and glorify your name. For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments have been made manifest. After these things I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plates. Clothed with pure bright linen having their chests guarded with golden bands. Then one of the live, four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God. 
omuku bilamu ebina na wa omuku ba malaiko musavu ebibonyo obonyo musavu ebitu ebili mutibia ebitu dobu sufu mungu wakatuonda e liba libo na who lives forever and ever e abeira we mirembe ne mirembe the temple was filled with smoke wema ne jula no muka from the glory of god okuva mukiti wa cha katonda and from his power no kuva manyike and no one was able to enter the temple ngateri asobola kuyingira yekale till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed pakange bibonyo bonyo musanvu ebyaba malaika musanvu bitukiride and that is the text we have for us today bino bye bya wandiko betu ino olwale that we will break down for us tugenda kubimenya amenya by the grace of god mukisacha katonda so that together wamufena we have an understanding tufuno kutegera of how god will complete his judgment engeri katonda ja gendo kutukiriza emisango je so when we read the book of revelation we tusobe kitabo choku bikulwa we see time and again tulabe bisera bi john take us back and forth yokana ngatuzaye mabega atena atwala we see sins in heaven tulabe biliwo muguru and then we see sins on earth na tulaga biche ebili kunsi and when we see what is happening we tulaba byonne biliwo against what is happening on the earth we see contrasts in what is happening all over chichi ekitambula wonna we witness the scenes of joy in heaven tulaba essanyu mu eri abali muguru and yet we are confronted by judgment on the earth ngate kunsi olaba emisango basala we see scenes of worship in heaven ngamuguru wali mukusinza and then we see scenes of wrath, the wrath of god on the earth ngamukunsi batulaga obusungu bwa katonda and often the question that comes to many of us abasinga ne tuliyoka twebuza why all this contrast is god fair katonda mwenkanya the fact is when you read all this amazima wetu soma bino byo ta you're going to discover one thing oina chogendo kuzu that god is just katonda wa bwenkanya and god is fair ate katonda atam bwenkanya eri buliyo so in today's text byandikira byo lwali john brings us now the glimpse of heaven kati yokana tulaga chiche chili mugulu as it prepares for the final judgment ngatuteka tekele emisange jo luva nyuma until this point God has mingled mercy and judgment. Katonda abadde atavula ekisa nokusala emisango wamu. Up until this moment. Ngatunatuka mukasera ka. We still see God leaving the door of repentance open. Tujja kulaba katonda ngo lujjo lokwene nyaluchi ali lugule. But when we get to the point that we are in right now. Newe tutuka mukasera ke tuyingira mukati. Humanity has made their final choice. Abantu babasazewo and satan iranga satan has been chosen over god ngabamulonze katonda bamusuliride so now the door of mercy is closing kati omulyango gwe bwo kusashira gugalidwa and there will be no more opportunity for the grace of god ngatecha ali mwaganya mulaya katonda okulage kisachi what we have now chetuina is the preparation enteka teka for what I will happen to those that have rejected Christ. Orechi gendo kubera kwabo abagana Kristo. So here the Bible tells us that John saw another sign. Bible yetugamba yokana nala bakabonera akala. Some versions relate it as another wonder. Bible yezimuzo geranti eche wunyisa ekida. We have begin, we began seeing these signs in Revelation chapter 12. Obonele bulo twata ndiko kubula ba musula ya 12. We saw the sign of the woman. Akabonele akomukazi. Whom we interpreted as the nation of Israel. Fenda go twata geranga chikirire gwanga lya Israel. In 12:3 we saw another sign. Lunyiro lokusa ndula ba akabonele akala. Of the great red dragon. O gusoto gunene who was representing Satan. Ngajja mu kifana ncha Satan. We then saw another sign. Ndula ba akabonele akala of the antichrist coming out of the sea omulabe wa kristo ngava munyanja then we saw signs of the angels ngabo bonero ngaba malaika tubalaba all pointing to the final judgment on earth ngabulyo mu atunuze eri mu musango gusemba yo now john calls our attention yokana atuyita to this vision okutula go pole se of what is happening atulaga che chidi wo and here we see seven angels batulaga ba malaika musango 
each having the last plagues. And these plagues signify God's last judgment that will fall on the world system. And there is nothing that will prevent that from happening. When these are poured out, they will complete the judgments of the tribulation. Verse 1 tells us that these judgments, that through these judgments, the wrath of God is filled up. Now, this is the translated from the Greek word telos. What is interesting about this word telos, it is from this word that our Master and Lord Jesus Christ did utter his last words at the cross that are recorded in John chapter 19 and verse 30. And it is the word it is finished. The word tetelestai. Now, tetelestai is a very interesting word. Because it is a word that was used during the day of our Lord, while he was on earth and used across a wide scope of activities on earth. So when a servant completed an assignment and they were certain that they had done their best, they said, Tetelestai. When a priest looked at an animal that was brought for sacrifice and checked it and found that it was worthy to be brought to the sacrificial altar. He pronounced this word tetelestai. This word was used by farmers. When a, a a young of the flock was born. The farmer would hold the lamb or the kid and examine it. When he found that it did not have a defect, he would say, it was the same word that was used by the artists. If an artist painted a picture and he looked at every stroke of the brush that had that had painted the masterpiece. And there was nothing more he would add to it. The perfect picture. He would pronounce this word. Now this was the same word that was used by merchants. When they were haggling over a price and they finally agreed on the price, they would shake hands and say the word tetelestai. When a soldier was in battle and he had finally put his his leg on the neck of his foe, he would scream this was a word homeowners used after they had purchased a property and everything had been done and they go to remove the signpost that was place in the front for sale. They are saying now this is no longer up for sale. The word used was 
Tetelestai. So when our Lord and Savior used that word, course, it was a very expressive word. That meant for you and I that have been purchased by the blood. There will never be a moment in history when our lives will be put up for sale again. The demands of heaven's justice had been met. His life had been examined and had met every condition of the law. He had fulfilled all the demands of justice for sin. And through that, he had the audacity to declare Tetelestai. Now, here is the same word used to signify completeness. But now it refers to the seven plagues calling them to the completion of God's wrath or God's judgment upon the earth. And how do we see that in verse 7? We then see that these seven angels are given bowels. And these bowels are said to be full of the wrath of God. Full means swelling. Imagine a bowel like this one. When it is said to be full, that means if it is poured until it is at the brim. And it is this that Revelation tells us in chapter 14 and verse 10 that those that reject the Lord and accept the Antichrist and not only accept the Antichrist but they go ahead and receive the sign upon their foreheads on their hand the Bible says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture and that means it is not diluted into the cup of his indignation. The message is this. The judgment of God is coming to the ungodly. And there will be no escape. But as we're looking at the judgments of God, then John gives us another picture. He gives us the picture of heaven. And here we see a scene of jubilation. So as heaven is preparing to pour out the wrath of God on earth, when we see the peak in heaven, we notice a completely different atmosphere. Because at this time, God is preparing to set up his kingdom. The, the Antichrist, the beast, and everyone they represent, heaven is preparing their downfall. But here we then see on the sea of glass, the sea that we first saw in the book of Revelation chapter 4, here it stood as a symbol of the spirit of holiness. Especially the righteous holiness which the spirit imparts 
to those who come to Christ. The Bible tells us standing on this grassy sea. And men and women of all walks of life. First of all, it is this holiness that we are talking about. It is through it that men are able to appear in the presence of God. Because the Bible tells us without holiness, no man shall see God. No one can stand in his presence on their own imputed righteousness or holiness. So, we get it through an imparted or an imputed righteousness which comes to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. But then the Bible talks about here it talks about it being mixed with fire. Why? Because this is a holiness that is made manifest in the midst of persecution. I want us to note also that this sea is not wavering. When we talk about sea for many people, you think about something that has waves on it, it is wavering, moving to and fro. Here we are seeing a solid and moving situation. There is nothing changing about it. It is, it is solid. Talking about referring to the holiness that is imparted upon us that is solid and cannot be shaken. But I want you to see the source of their jubilation. In chapter two, verse 2 of the same chapter, the Bible tells us that these heavenly dwellers are rejoicing. And they are rejoicing with good reason. One, they have heard the call of God. And they have repented of their sins. And they have been wonderfully saved. So many of them give up their lives during the time of the tribulation. They may have suffered horrifying death. But they are now home. Home safe. Safe at last. In the presence of their loving Father. The Bible, I want you to notice something. It refers to these matters as being victorious over the beast. Look at how the Bible says. It says concerning them. It says, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name, and these are the ones standing on the sea of glass. It refers to them as victorious. Victorious over the devil. The one who was responsible for their death on earth. And that is amazing. Why? Because on earth it looked like the devil was the one victorious. But what was happening is, listen to me clearly, the devil thinking that by killing them, he was overcoming them, was providing a conduit for them to escape 
from the wrath on earth to get into the presence. And when they're on the other side, they look back and see the wisdom of God. They look back and see the justice of God. And they have a moment to celebrate because they have overcome him. You see, the devil Satan. may use everything he wants to do, but it will end up achieving the purposes of God, both in time and through eternity. I want you to notice this. So many times we are under the illusion of what we see happening. But we need to see things from the perspective of God. You see, why the Antichrist thinks he's getting rid of the enemy, of his enemies here on earth? He's instead running a shuttle of getting people from earth to heaven. He's actually an elevator boy getting them to heaven. He does not realize that God is using him to fulfill his purposes concerning his sins. And here we see them, the Bible says, they are singing two songs. Two songs of redemption. The first one is the song of Moses. And then the second is the song of the Lamb. Let's first look at the song of Moses. This was the song that we find in Exodus chapter 15. This is where it is first recorded. The song of Moses is the first recorded song in the Bible. It was sung by the children of Israel as they were delivered from Pharaoh and Egypt. They sang it upon seeing all the Egyptians that were chasing them being swallowed up by the Red Sea, fulfilling what God had spoken, that the Egyptians that you now see, you will never see again forever. And that was a moment to celebrate. Why? Because it was by the blood of the Lamb that hung on the lentils of their doorsteps that the angel of death passed over them. And then Pharaoh's back was broken that he now decided to let them go free. So they are celebrating a redemption that was hinged on the blood of the Lamb, which was a shadow of the redemption that we now have, that is hankered anchored in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And that is a moment to celebrate. So they are singing these two songs, relating experiences, one going backwards to the picture that God was pointing forward to, and now celebrating that what God 
in his wisdom had pointed to has now come to fulfillment. The first song was sung by the Red Sea. The last song, which is the song of the Lamb, is sung by the glassy sea. Now forever they are standing firm. Forever in the presence of God. Their enemies totally vanquished. Celebrating the victory that will live on forever and ever and ever. The song of the Lamb is sung to praise God for bringing his people in. The song of Moses was sung to praise God for taking his people out. Before it was out of Egypt. Now they are celebrating for getting into heaven. Both songs talk about redemption. Both songs praise God. When you look at what they are singing about, it is amazing. First of all, in verse 3, they sing of his works. They sing of a God who works with power and moves with glory. They sing of his ways. They sing of his ways as being right and just. They sing of his wonder. Exhort and magnify him who alone is worthy to be praised. They sing of his worship and declare that he is worthy to receive and will receive all the worship of all mankind. You see, when we talk about Jesus, many people say, well, I mean, calm down, calm down. Why talk about Jesus? You see, the Bible says that every knee will bow. Of everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth, under the sea, and every tongue will proclaim that he is Lord. So worshiping Jesus is only a matter of when. It is not a matter of if. Every knee we bow down to worship him. So for you who has not received him as Lord, today is your day to bow down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and sing your worship and live the life that is worthy of worshiping him. Then finally we see them sing of the wrath of God. They sing of a God who alone is worthy to judge sin and sinners. Why? Because he alone is holy. He alone is just. Now, look at, understand this. So, having seen the jubilation and the celebration, it calls us to something that we need to observe. When you look at what is being talked about here, none of them talks about their achievements. None of them is talking about their credentials. You see, I think this is where we miss it. We are crowning the wrong head. 
engule tujiteka ku mtu omtu omtali mtu it is not about us it is about him sife nebyo nabiriri they do not say oh lord how faithful we have been to you te bagamba ti mukama ngatu bade besi gwa joli how true have we been to your word ngatu bade ba mazimeri echigambo how steadfastly have we and you are we don't hear anything of that to balaba nga mukama ngatu nyedde mukugumikiriza the only pronouns you hear are pronouns like you buli kigambo chebogera kiri gwe you gwe weka your we chicho great and marvelous are your deeds binene atebye wonyise ebikolwa byo lord god almighty we mukama katonda asi just and true are your ways enkola zo za mazima teza bwenka king of the ages kabaka we mirembe ne mirembe who will not fear you o lord ana atakutye gwe mukama and bring glory to your name nale ete chitiwe ye for you alone are holy we we come go mutuko all nations will come and worship before you amagona gadja kujaga size gwe for your righteous righteous acts we bikola bye byo revealed you see when we stand in the presence of god we tuimirira mukubera kwa katonda it cannot be about us we cannot you, you when you stand before the presence of the holy god woyimiza maso ga katonda omutukufu there is something about the presence of god waliwe chinte chikwatagana ko kubera kwa katonda that you feel everything has got nothing to do with you ngula batoyina na chinna cho sobulu okwewana ko everything has got to be about you be grateful bulichimu chire tagu okubera omusanyifu oba omweba grateful to god nga oweba zakatonda for who he is rachel tag and for what he has done for you and i believe our songs need to get to that level zikiriza nenyimba za fezituke kudale where it is not about us it is not about what we have achieved sit ne bijo bitu mazo not about where we are obagwa wetuli but it is about who god is ngatuyimba kukatonda chali and the wonderful and marvelous things selekosi antasikaya that he has done nebye wonyo byo nabya akozi That is the place we need to get to. That is where the spirit of the Lord is taking us. To. And I want us to see something else unfolding here. We see the temple which is open. And then in the temple we see what we call the tabernacle of the testimony. Now there is something profound here that is being unveiled. Because the word testimony here refers to the law that was handed down to Moses on Mount Sinai. Now the question is how the, why does this come through at this point? Because the law sets God's standard for living. And it is through that law that God manifests his glory and holiness. Through the law God sets a standard on what is right and what is wrong. So without the law then there is nothing. There is no standard. So it is the law that gives given to men through which understand the holiness of god it is through the law that we understand the expectations of god from his people and now here john is seeing the picture of the testimony why because the law was god's standard of righteousness that people has never changed God's standard has never come down so what does god do God sends Jesus to be the fulfillment of this law 
So the standard didn't change. Christ comes and fulfills the law. Then we in who believe in Christ don't feel, fulfill the requirements of the law. But through faith in Jesus Christ who has fulfilled the requirements of the law we are then able to fulfill the requirements of God's law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that's wonderful. Because when you understand that, then the law is not your enemy. <laughs> the law is God's standard. So through Christ, you meet the requirements of God. And there, that's the reason we are now seeing this testimony being revealed in the temple. So, what happens then? We see seven angels appearing from the temple in heaven clothed in pure and white linen which speaks of the holiness of God which witnesses to the holiness of the one that they serve. You see, our lives as believers in Jesus Christ should bear testimony of the one that we serve. Which brings me to a question. When people look at your life, to whom do they point it to? that you serve. That is a personal question for you to answer. To reflect upon and make the changes. The Bible says they, are, they wear golden girdles around their chests. God is often a symbol of divinity. Uh, it is also a symbol of glory and majesty. When we read through the Bible, we see kings clothed in God, speaking of majesty, speaking of glory. But this glory is not the earthly glory. This, this is a heavenly glory. So these angels, when they march out, they are revealing the glory and the majesty of the one that they serve. And they have in their hands the last place as bowls that they are going to pour upon the earth. And this we shall see in the subsequent chapters of what will happen when they pour out their wrath on the earth. You see, up until this time, God's wrath has been building up against sin ever since Adam and Eve. Now, on this day is when we will see this wrath pulling forward out to humanity that will not accept his hand of grace. The grace that we receive through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to see something about the temple. You see, now we see that the temple that has been opened, but there is something happening. Here the Bible tells us that there was smoke coming out. The, the glory of the Lord was filling the temple. And where have we seen this happen before? It brings us to a scene 
in Isaiah chapter 6. Waliwo ekitulagamu Isaiah mukaga. And the Bible says Bible concerning this awesome sin which the Bible talks about Bible and Isaiah quotes in verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord seated on the throne high and exalted and the train of his robe filled the temple in the year that King Uzziah died when Isaiah was mourning the death of Uzziah. His eyes were open. In a state of mourning on one side. God opens his sight. And what he sees on the other side is different. Here he sees a king dead. Here he sees the Lord enthroned. Here there is mourning. But here there are cherubs in worship and majesty. They are worshipping the majesty of God on high. But something had happened on earth. Isaiah tells us by the Spirit of the Lord that it was in the same year that King Uzziah died that he saw the Lord. It is heaven's oh. message to tell him that Uzziah is not the Lord. There is a Lord seated on the throne, high and lifted up. And the Bible says the glory of his throne filled the temple. The, in this text, the Bible describes it as the robe. A train of his robe filling the temple. His glory was so awesome that Isaiah said, I am undone. I am undone. I'm a man who I'm a man who went in this. The purity of the presence of God was so realistic for him. It was an experience that helped him realize his unworthiness in the presence of God. But I want you to see something here. That he heard the seraphim call and at the sound of their voices the Bible says the doorsteps and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Now here in this text, John sees the great temple in heaven open. What does he see next? He sees the seven angels coming out of the Holy of Holies, bearing the seven bowels of the wrath of God. And we are told that there was smoke from the glory of God and from his power. A holy smoke coming from the presence of God. And what happened? The Bible records that no one could go into the temple. Something that you need to understand. The temple signified the place where God would meet with his people. And access would only be by the blood. And would, the people would get in to offer prayers. They would get in to have a moment of reflection, to have an encounter with God. 
But here we now see the smoke. We see the glory of God hindering the people from getting in. What is the message here? The message is at this point in time it is now impossible to access the presence. It is now impossible to get to the mercy seat. It is now impossible for the prayers of any that may cry out to get to God. The way has been shut. What is coming out is just the wrath of God. So men can no longer repent at this point. It is too late to pray because the judgment of God has come. What is the message for us today? The message is this. Today, God's salvation is still available to whoever will come to Jesus. To you listening to us, to you watching us today, God's salvation, God's door of salvation is still open. You can come in. But the day will come in that day he will offer salvation to no one. All he has to give in that day is judgment, wrath, and damnation. So get in now. Get in now. Why the door is still for you who has never known the Lord Jesus you have never committed your life to him he is not the savior he is not the lord of your life why don't you pray with me why the door is still that you may receive this wonderful gift of salvation that the Lord by his spirit will come and make his home in you wash and purify you like the angel flew in the time of Isaiah and cleansed his lips that you may be cleansed by the Spirit of God. So why don't you say this prayer? Say, Dear Lord, I am a sinner. Come and save me. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And on the cross of Calvary, when he said it is finished, the justice demands of God were met. Lord Jesus, I receive you in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Change me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Break me, Lord. Fill me up. Mold me into what you want me to be. And by your spirit I pray. Lead me. To walk this walk of salvation. In a manner that is worthy of your name. In a manner that is worthy of your presence. In a manner that is worthy of your person. Write my name in the book of life. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Amen. You have been wonderfully saved. Please call that number on the screen. Share this moment. Tell us of what God has done. The person you meet on the other end will give you the first steps on this wonderful journey. 
that ends in the arms of Jesus on the glassy sea victorious over Satan victorious over the Antichrist victorious over his name victorious over all evil now for you who is a believer struggling you seem to be on a glassy you seem to be on a wave moving one direction going back another two whatever your circumstance of life with God all things are possible I want to believe God with you for something special that you may be anchored by the spirit of God and your life will be changed for all eternity. That there will be a testimony upon your life. Not by you, but by the people watching your life. That God has done something in your life. Why don't you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you never fail. I thank you that even now your spirit is here. And it's not by my, not by power, but by your Holy Spirit. That shackles of bondage will be broken. That your people will be set free. That your people will be anchored in your truth that those that have been in darkness a great light will shine upon them Lord in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I thank you right now because situations are turning around in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God to that person who has threatening to commit suicide. That one with suicidal thoughts sweeping your brain right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I rebuke that spirit of death. And I command you to be set free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. For whom the Son sets free is freely. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God richly bless you. And from Dominion Church, we say till we meet again next Tuesday, have a wonderful time in the presence of God. Shalom. You are blessed. Amen. Amen.